Good morning and welcome to another edition of the Macnaid Cheese Experience. Um, we hope everyone really enjoyed their cheeses last month. Um, and this month, obviously, we wanted to come back with a bit of a nod to Valentine's Day and uh, the, um, yeah, the, sort of the uh, romantic element of, of cheese. So we just a couple of nods towards that. Um, the selection this evening, um, or this morning, whichever time you're watching this, is very much um, uh, from English and European. I got some lovely, lovely cheeses. And uh, so I suppose really, uh, let's just start with it. We'll talk about the, the goat's cheese. Um, so this is the Golden Cross um, goat's cheese. It comes in a lovely little log. Um, and you can see just from the, the cheese, it's this lovely, beautiful consistency. And this will ripen up beautifully. Leave it to sit out a little while. It will ripen up wonderfully and really soften. At the moment, it's quite cold in here. So yeah, we've already just taken it out. So leave it to sit a little while, but already it's got that lovely velvety texture starting to come through as it ripens and, and comes to temperature. And you can see it's got a little, uh, you can see the, the, the ash just um, around the periphery of the cheese. Um, and it's yeah, a lovely mold ripen um, cheese there. So mm, really beautiful. Mm, the the herd is very much um, only fed on pasture. There's no hay or no other feeds involved. So that will obviously de deliver a, a degree of um, variation through the year, depending on the, on the, um, on the uh, supply and the, uh, the, the level of the grass at the time, the pasture. But what it does, it gives this lovely, rich and uh, um, complex flavors. Um, it's quite citrusy, quite grassy, and uh, yeah, you really get that coming through. Really fresh, not overly goaty, really fantastic in salads, um, obviously on a cheese board, but equally grilled as well, but absolutely sensational. Um, and it's been getting loads of awards, this really great, um, very well recognised cheese, and uh, is, a, is, a, is a firm favourite of ours. Um, we don't have it in all the time, partly because it's quite, you know, quite seasonally available when we can get it, but when we can get it, it's absolutely uh, fantastic. So do enjoy that, uh, that cheese, it's a, it's a real cracker. Um, on next, I'll talk about the, the Shropshire Blue. So this Shropshire Blue is a beautiful cheese. It's made by um, our friends at the Colston Bassett Dairy. Um, so the same guys who make um, the, our Stilton. And Colston Bassett Stilton is widely regarded as the best Stilton. It's kind of like the, uh, you know, this is like the, um, yeah, very much so this is um, the, the top of the pinnacle for the uh, for, for Stiltons. There are some other really, really good ones as well, like Cropwell Bishop, for example. Um, but we've always chosen to sell the Colston Bassett. And in this case, with the Shropshire Blue, it is a wonderful cheese. Um, it's, it's not actually made in Shropshire, but it's the traditional Shropshire recipe. And you can see the blue in there, the, those great striations you know, where it gets spiked. Um, with the um, the forks as they they're going to introduce the mm, the blue to the to the cheese, um, and you can see, yeah taste wise it's slightly um, sweeter and creamier than a Stilton, um, very similar method of making it but yeah slightly sweeter and creamier, um, and maybe not quite as sharp as a as a Stilton. The colour in this cheese. Mm, Excuse me, it's so good. It comes from actually anatto, which is the same food dye as is used in the mimolette as well. So anatto is this amazing um, uh, food dye, natural food dye, entirely natural, which actually originates from South America and particularly of Brazil. And originally it was used for uh, sort of ritual um, body painting and, and, and decoration. And obviously it's just been um, then brought into um, more and more um, use as a natural food dye across the world um, and it's very widely used in cheese making for adding that, that red flavour. It doesn't really lend a huge amount to the, to, the, to the flavour, it's not supposed to, it just gives a bit of differentiation in the colour and you can see it just gives that lovely um, you know, depth of colour compared to normal cheeses and obviously equally reflected here in the mimolette as well. So the Mimolette's a really interesting cheese as well. So this, you can see, if I just pick it up slightly, you can really see 
sorry, it's a very small slices, but the cheese itself is the size of a sort of like a cantaloupe melon, maybe. And it has these really deep pitted um, natural rind. And see, where it's almost like it's been eaten away. And actually, it has been. Because what they do, they introduce cheese mites to this cheese. And they live on the surface of the, of the cheese and give it this amazing texture. Um, and they just eat away at the, the rind there. And, then, and it's a really adds, it's very widely, absolutely harmless. Quite happy to eat that rind as well. They're absolutely microscopic. And, um, but uh, yeah, really nice additional pass, uh, partner to your, uh, to your, your romantic cheese board. Uh, but it's a firm cheese. Ex do excuse me, I've left the, the Stilton all over the rind there. Um, but really firm, and you can see the the little minerally, a few little minerally crystals in there. And you can see these little pits where, as moisture has been drawn out of the cheese, it leaves little, these little bubbles through the cheese, these little air pockets. Mm. And yeah, it's got this lovely, rich um, flavour, and obviously with the colouring, it's just a real classic, it's a really hard cheese to cut on the counter. So um, yeah, getting a nice thin slice like this is, is quite a challenge. But um, yeah, really classic. It comes from the um, um, France, obviously, and it's right in between, if you think of um, Champagne here and Alsace here, it sits right in the middle between the two. So it comes from a really foody um, area, uh, lots of really strong, um, you know, sort of big food influences there. And actually, as a result, it's really well paired with champagne and other dishes in, 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 in Alsace and that area. Uh, and it's got that really savoury, nutty flavour, um, which is, you know, just, just a, a great cheese. And um, uh, yeah, it's got this wonderful character with the outside of the, of the skin, with the, uh, with the rind. This pitted, um, ancient-looking uh, um, uh, cheese or, or wine on the skin, which is again, it's along with the cheese mites. It's matured in um, uh, quite humid caves, um, and uh, yeah, that hence it you know, gets this the, the pitted element. Um, so, gosh, do I dare really cut into the uh, corner morn? So obviously this wonderful cheese is, uh, we, we have it year round, but obviously this time of year then um, we, we go through an awful lot of them. Um, oh, dare I? Yeah, go on, go in for it. Now, again, similarly with the um, Golden Cross, let this sit out for a little while to really ripen. You can see at the moment it's still a little bit crumbly in the middle there. Um, but as I say, it's quite cold in here. And um, if you'll excuse us, we recently um, took it out. But let that ripen up as well, and that will uh, yeah ripen beautifully. Slightly, you can see that slightly more buttery colour than the than the Golden Cross. That's because it's a cow's cheese, a cow's milk. Um, but uh, yeah, similarly a a, um, a bloomy rind cheese. It's made in obviously Normand in uh, Normandy, uh, so it's Camembert style. So yeah, the shape is you know so it's immaterial um, to the actual. The cheese you can have quite easily have it as a round, but it's obviously beautiful at this time of year, um, and uh, yeah, a nice nod towards Valentine's Day. Um, but we also have, sell loads of these, really popular on top of wedding cheesecakes as well. So obviously, um, if you have a stacked cake of, of cheeses, then it's lovely to top them off with a with a little Cournot Um But again, mm. oh, it's lovely. Bit crumbly at the moment, but that will ripen as with the Golden Cross. Have a really beautiful velvety um, finish. So, four lovely cheeses. Um, I'm kind of matching all of those, I should have said earlier maybe, um, with champagne. Now it's only oh, about, about midday, but who can resist? But again, so Pia Mignon. A really popular uh, champagne house. They're a family, small, relatively small family house. Um, obviously, they're not unlike the um, the big, the Bollingers, the Tattingers, who we uh, who we stock. These guys are a slightly smaller house, but really, really good. Um, they are, uh, I think it's sixty uh, percent Pinot Meunier, which is interesting, and then uh, ten percent Pinot Noir and thirty percent Chardonnay. 
So obviously the classic champagne grapes, as you would expect, um, but really nice, soft and creamy mousse, nothing too um, sharp. And actually, as with many champagnes, really goes well, really well with the goat's cheese, fantastic well with the, the Corona Monde. And again, the Mimolette being obviously the proximity, obviously always so often cheese is made in proximity to a, to a wine growing region work really well together and this is no exception and so with the the soft bloomy cheeses here with the goat and the uh, the Corona Monde and the Mimolet work really well not to say the the, the, the um, Shropshire Blue doesn't either but um, really fantastic natural uh, pairing there and um, yeah really great little uh, bottle to share between two um, for an evening so yeah very enjoyable now the other thing um, I wanted to introduce here, which some people think, oh, that's a funny thing to have with cheese, but actually it works so well, is the Pan Forte. So Pan Forte is, as many of you will know from McNaid's, is a, a, a sweet treat, if you like. Um, it originates from Siena, and this is Marabisi, which is one of the premium uh, Pan Forte makers, um, historic makers in Siena. Now, this is a Pan Forte Margarita, and that's named after Queen Margarita of Savoy, who I think it was 1897 it was, thereabouts, 18-something. Um, she visited Siena and she was presented this as a, uh, as, as a, um, a gift to her and it's hence been named uh, Margarita ever since. Um, but what it is, so it's a, it is a dense sweet treat which has got this wonderful all these things you can just imagine because you've got the almonds in there you've got the candied fruit the peel you've got spices through there um, and a very light dusting of sugar but this combined with cheeses is absolutely heavenly and it's obviously um it, it, you can have them all, to, all all through the year but um yeah particularly i suppose with the spices a really sort of wintry um complement for cheese boards and rather than putting it on a, uh, a biscuit and having it, I actually like it just separate, just as almost a wedge, like a slice of cheese in itself. Mm. And just the nuts and the fruit are just natural, all natural complements to the cheeses and the wine for that matter. So that's that. Oh, the lovely cinnamon flavour coming through. And... To finish all that off, you've also got the, now I love these actually by themselves, these oat cakes from the Isle of Mull, the Isle of Mull Bakery. These are made um, just outside Tobermory, very close to the um, um, Mull um, dairy where they make the Isle of Mull cheddar, which um, we also stopped for a long time. So these particular ones, they're just a lovely, natural, traditional uh, oat cake. You've got uh, pepper through them, so they're slightly peppered, but these with the soft cheeses, for example, absolutely heavenly. And they're a small, again, family run business, and they also do sweet biscuits as well, so cookies and, and like and gluten free ones. But I particularly like these traditional oat cakes, and obviously, the Isle of Mull is absolutely stunning area. Um, off the west coast of Scotland and uh, um, yeah obviously Scottish oat cakes are um, very well known um, and uh, yeah classic um, addition to to a cheese board and I think uh, like I'm quite happy to devour all these cheeses uh, together together with the oat cakes and the, and the champagne so I hope you will all enjoy and uh, that we'll see you again next month for our, our, our next range of cheeses um, when you know, and what, what surprises may be in store there so thank you very much and uh, enjoy the cheese board <laughs>